What's going on guys, this is Rob, and if you notice in our video on Dr. Fate Explained, we didn't talk about his powers, and the reason why is because I wanted to make a separate video and then compare the two to see how you guys respond to it. So, in this video, I'm going to make you guys an expert on Dr. Fate's powers. Now, here's the thing. There's Dr. Fate, and then there's Kent Nelson, and that's a very important distinction that we'll talk about here in a second. But one of the things to know is that when it comes to the concept of Dr. Fate, this comes from Naboo the Wise, who's basically a guy, part of a group called the Lords of Order, who stands against a group called the Lords of Chaos. Now, these guys wage war against each other all the time, and the fact that they fight is basically what maintains the balance between good and evil in DC Comics, but they are ridiculously powerful guys. I mean, they're they're like cosmic entities in Marvel Comics, right? They're just insanely capable in the kinds of things that they can do. And so one of the things to know is that at some point over the course of his existence, Nabu the Wise had actually left a handful of magical artifacts that exist on Earth. So basically, you have the Helmet of Fate, which is one of the more powerful artifacts that exist in DC Comics, and is actually the source of most of Dr. Fate's powers. But you also have the Amulet of Anubis, and then you have the Cloak of Destiny. But the thing about this is that while most incarnations of Dr. Fate are completely reliant on the talismans of Naboo for their power, Kent Nelson can actually perform some magical feats without them because he spent so much time training under Naboo the Wise. Simply put here, that he doesn't need the Helmet of Fate in order to practice magic, but the magic he practices without the Helmet of Fate is far less potent than the magic that he can use when he does have the helmet. And so the reality here, and kind of taking a page out of our Beyond Omega level video, in terms of what Dr. Fate's powers are, the simplest way to put this is that he basically possesses insane levels of magical ability due to the helmet of fate that basically let him do whatever it is that he wants to do. Now, among the more common ways that Dr. Fate uses his magic are basically by granting himself superhuman strength and speed, flight and levitation, telekinesis and telepathy, invulnerability, immunity to diseases, as well as immortality, kind of, because he actually did end up dying in DC Comics at one point. But Dr. Fate can also travel through time, he can create bolts of mystical energy, and he can warp matter and reality. Now, this is by no means an exhaustive list, but it gives you a sense of what it is that he can do. So, what we're going to do is instead of just list bombing the things that he can do, I'm actually going to give you examples. So, Dr. Fate is able to manipulate matter on an atomic level, right? Let's focus on that for a second. That he has reassembled the atoms of a broken construct that was created by the original Green Lantern, Alan Scott, and was able to reorganize the atoms of his own body to make himself invisible, which doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, but hey, it's magic. Another thing that he could do is he could actually reassemble his own existence simply just based on a thought. That's all he needed, right? All he needed was just a simple thought, and he could reconstitute his own physical form, which is insane when you think about it. But his telepathy is is so advanced that he's actually able to detect people and things in other dimensions. And his telekinesis was so powerful that he was able to move a planet into a sun, which of course destroys the entire planet itself. But Dr. Fate has also demonstrated an ability to heal the wounds and diseases of others, going so far as to cure a kid of cancer, remove suicidal thoughts from a man's mind, and even resurrect the dead. Dr. Fate has also been able to roll back the borders of the entire space-time continuum, which means that he's able to alter the very concept of reality itself. Now, he's also proven himself capable of being able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Spectre, who's one of the strongest beings in the entirety of the universe. And the Spectre even comments that at the height of his abilities, Dr. Fate was as powerful as the Spectre himself. Now, a little bit of an explanation here for those of you guys who don't know who the Spectre is. In the hierarchy of DC Comics, when it comes to mystical beings, the Spectre's at the top. And in fact, depending on what era of DC Comics you're reading, the Spectre was basically the hand of God's vengeance. Like, when God gets pissed off, that's the Spectre, right? That's just how powerful that guy was. He's just on a whole nother echelon of power. There's no direct comparison from the Spectre to Marvel Comics, but if we were to create one, we could call him, like, the Living Tribunal. So imagine a being out there that's so powerful, they can match the Living Tribunal in power, depending on the height of their abilities, and that's what Dr. Fate is in DC Comics. Now, on another occasion, focus Focusing on the Spectre here, on another occasion, when the Spectre had placed a curse on Hal Jordan to destroy his soul, Dr. Fate 
was actually able to reverse the spell of the Spectre and save the soul of Hal Jordan. But the fact that Dr. Fate's magic is powerful enough to defy the will of the Spectre, who is probably the single most adept magic user in the entirety of the DC Universe, is a testament to the power of Dr. Fate. But Dr. Fate is also able to exercise an enormous amount of control over powerful cosmic and demonic beings. He can exercise demons and was able to banish a powerful demon back to hell against its will. Now, one of the things that I want to specify here because that doesn't seem like overly special when it comes to demons in dc comics it's a whole different beast from marvel comics in marvel comics you have like mephisto right and you have like damon hellstrom and a few people like that who are powerful beings in their own right but in dc comics demons are not that far removed from god right not even that far removed from lucifer they're more than enough to take on pretty much any superhero on earth and i think that needs to be stated in order to give you context otherwise it's kind of like so like a dude who possesses people like what's the big deal about that and it's a pretty big deal it's a pretty significant thing now on more than one occasion dr fate has been able to battle beings of chaos and then emerge victorious now of course these are the lords of chaos these are the antithesis the opposite of the lords of order so basically beings that are equal in power to naboo but basically evil now the kicker about this is that it's not just dr fate per se it's not just kent nelson it's actually when kent nelson his wife enza who became dr fate at a future point in time and and then Naboo, who's the source of her power, when they all merge into a singular being. But it's basically the final form. And when that happens, he becomes godly in terms of his power and depending on who you're talking to in dc comics some people will say that dr fate at that level of power actually rivals the power of the presence who's basically god in dc comics the single most powerful being in existence kind of their version of the one above all from marvel comics again that's not an absolute i'm not saying it's an absolute <laughs> i'm just saying depending on who you talk to some people interpret it that way but yeah that's the long and short of dr fate's powers now one of the things that i also want to specify here he does have a whole host of other abilities we're focusing on the most powerful ones here but this guy's gone toe to toe with this with superman like literally fought superman to a standstill right this guy's like whisked the justice league across like dimensions just like teleported them away to like other dimensions this guy can do all kinds of crazy stuff right this guy can fly at astronomical speeds in the old golden age comics back in the 1940s this guy actually traveled miles within just fractions of a second granted powers are more scaled down back then but it was still incredibly fast even the helmet of naboo which this is a commonly cited point so this may not be new to you but even the helmet of naboo has astronomical levels of speed the thing was able to travel to the edge of the universe and back in a year which is a pretty insane level of speed the thing about this is that dr fate just has your normal run-of-the-mill powers that are granted to pretty much everybody which are basically all the powers of superman minus like x-ray vision and frost breath he just usually has those at a higher level but then with those talismans that he possesses that were created and given to him by Naboo as his chosen representative of the Lords of Order. It elevates his power to a whole different level. But this begs the question, in a straight up fight, because I know people are going to ask this, in a straight up fight, who wins between like Dr. Fate and Dr. Strange? I'm going to be honest with you guys, my personal opinion, Dr. Fate wins. I think Dr. Fate comes out on top in a fight between him and Dr. Strange. Maybe we'll do a video where we talk about that, right? Where we literally have Dr. Fate versus Dr. Strange. Which one of these guys is more powerful? But with that being said, guys, these are basically the powers of Dr. Fate. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments section. Thank you all for watching, and I will catch you all later. Peace.